how can you how do you change anti-racist uh, thinking yeah yeah um boy in one minute <laughs> um <laughs> uh I, I i do think that um we need to look at earlier models of resistance uh, francis harper is one model i mean she used her talent as a writer to um, present narratives that she hoped would have an impact both on the black community and the white community but she was also a political activist in women's rights movement and black civil rights movements in the late 19th century um i guess one of the things that tells us is that um, these are questions of political policy that may, um, and one way to address it would be timely, right? Vote, um, participate in the political structures and, and platforms that allow us to change um, the legal structures. But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that these are grounded in issues of culture. And changing the laws does not always change people's minds. And I think Therefore, you have to think about storytelling. That's one of the, the things that Harper is doing. Um, you have to think about um, addressing both, let me, let me rephrase it this way, addressing the problem from a position of building alliances. Um, most uh, movements within the black community have had to focus on addressing the white community because blacks numerically do not constitute um, a large enough group in the United States to, to shape their own political status. Mm -hmm. Slavery would not have ended if blacks had been the only ones mobilized to end slavery. It's just a reality. So thinking political change of a fundamental level has happened most readily when there has been um, alliances, coalitions, uh, talking across boundaries, finding people with similar kinds of goals and working toward bringing about change. Um, will there be people that you cannot reach? That's always been true. That's always been true. It was true in the 19th century in the battle against slavery. Um, in some cases, some people will have to be confronted uh, and um, have change made despite them. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's what voting sometimes does. Um, but I guess what I would suggest is that there has always been resistance. There has been change, right? I wouldn't be sitting here uh, if people hadn't uh, done things in the 50s and 60s that allowed me to go to the schools that I ended up going to and to get the training that I ended up getting. I'm not here because I'm special. I'm here because changes were made to systems that had uh, prevented people like me from getting into positions like this. Um, look for moments of change. And when you participate in these kinds of changes, um, both be patient, but also be vocal and direct. Um, there, there is some ignorance there, that, and there are occasions where people, once they become aware, and I think the recent Black Lives Matter movement has shown some of this, that there are people that once they become educated or aware of certain things, they become involved in a different way. You can say, why did it take having videos of violence done unto people when that violence had been done for generations? It's a reality that the video was more powerful and presented in a, in a particular kind of writing or talking about it might not. Whether it's right or wrong is in some ways irrelevant. It's a reality that now people are becoming aware. Taking that awareness and pushing it to, in certain constructive directions is um, a valuable manifestation of this kind of resistance. But I can't stress enough how important it is to build coalition, to build connections among communities. Um, that is gonna be crucial in terms of moving us uh, in the way we need to be moved.